So about a year and a half ago, I came to my boss and says, said, um, we have this amazing thing called Wikipedia, but for some reason, we have really no good map support. And even though quite a few uh, of the articles contain some sort of information about Wikipedia, I mean, about, about maps, about ge geography, about uh, coordinates, we don't have any good service to really visualize it, let people interact with it, and kind of turn from static pages that Wikipedia frequently is to something interactive where you can click and zoom in and explore. Um, so um, my boss at the time, Thomas Fink, uh, really helped with getting the project started. Then Max and later Julian really helped get it on the road, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. And actually, Max and Julian will join me later during the presentation. Anyway, Wikipedia has tons of information. We need to get it somehow visualized and shown to the users to tell a story. Uh, just having a basic map is not actually enough to have in an article because they can just go to Google Maps or SM or any other site uh, that shows that map. They need to see something that's related to the article they're reading. I mean, for example, if you're reading an article about Don Quixote, you probably want to see which way they, uh, the guy went through Spain. That's probably not the data you would have in OSM, or do you? I mean, no? Is it? <laughs> well, I think it's, it should be added, but, or migratory bird paths, or uh, where whales kind of live and migrate, and many other things. So now we need to kind of combine the two, the contributory power of all the volunteers to add this wonderful data to the map that OSM created, or some community created, to, have the, to be the, the backdrop, to, to give the context of where in the world this is. And unfortunately, my super slides are not showing the way they were supposed to be showing. There's a presenter view thing in the JPEG that I should probably move to. Uh, anyone knows how to do Google presentation? Um, it's like, it just keeps disappearing. Oh, there we go, we got it. Kinda. It's just not gonna have a full screen. So f first, we created this very powerful system that Julian is about to start talking about, uh, where we, built, using Leaflet, we built some ability for Wikipedia to add tags. Yes, so um, I'm not gonna, like you, you guys all know what map is, you probably all know what Leaflet is, so I'm not gonna, um, go too much into details, but basically we created that new tag on, um, in MediaWiki. So people can simply um, put map frame and a width and a height and a zoom and a, a map center and some geojson and it will show a map and in the article. Um, another tag that we created is map link. And so that would just put a link within the article when you click on it, it opens a map in full screen like this. And um, this is uh, something that we, uh, um, so basically I'm, I'm on the, the front end side of it and I've developed a JavaScript API that volunteers can just require and then start playing with it. And so this is an example of uh, customization with uh, Wikivoyage, which is one of our uh, side projects. And, um, you can see that they added some controls to, to their specific um, project. But maps are in the articles, but they are also very powerful to represent all kinds of data. And, and a lot of people, for example, are criticizing the, the search on Wikipedia. And um, we, I'm, I'm part of the discovery department, which is doing a lot of work to improve the search on Wiki. And they recently added the geo search to the, the search features. 
And so this is an example of how we can also like, for, um, um, query the articles that are nearby uh, San Francisco, for example. And you will see, so this is just on beta right now, it's not on production, it's gonna be on production very, very soon at feed. Um, and maps are a very, very great tool and we can build all kinds of integrations. So we have a lot of coordinates on a lot of projects. This is an example on commons and this is like the picture of the, of the year, the, the second picture of the year 2016, I think. 15, I don't know. And um, so we have coordinates, but again, you know, it's, it's really hard. So like you can just put a map and it's much easier to, and much faster to actually see where the, the, the photo was taken. Another example on Wikidata, um, we have a bunch of entities and they have some coordinate location uh, associated to them. And so again, this is a very nice example of, of showing those coordinates within a map and showing that point on the map. And also like, for example, if, if you look at the diff history, you can have like two maps and see like where the, the point moved and, and you can like quickly review if that makes sense or not. And that's another example. Yuri is probably going to come back. So, but what I wanted to share the most with you, talk, to talk about the most, is um, how two of our communities can uh, benefit from our work together. Um, Catherine already mentioned Wikidata, and I think Wikidata is the, like, the cornerstone of this collaboration. Uh, this is the service that was built about three or four years ago by Wikimedia Germany, and uh, it runs on Wikimedia uh, servers. It's, it connects to all the index, all the different articles across languages, and moreover, it gives a lot of metadata. It stores a lot of data about an article or about an entity um, that is very easily queryable and indexable. Using Wikidata, we can really bring together OSM elements and Wikipedia information uh, for all sorts of usages, and I'll demo it later. Uh, this is the very simple uh, query service. Not Sorry, the service is not very simple. I, it takes me, I still don't understand it, tell you the truth, uh, even though I've been using it quite extensively. Uh, it's kind of like SQL, but totally not. Um, if anyone has ever used RDF, you would know what it is. Uh, we have one engineer who actually understands it. He's the guy who implemented it. Um, so whenever I need a query, I just ask him. Um, works out quite well. The point is that you can ask very, very elaborate questions. You can say, give me a list of uh, most, the biggest cities with female mayor, or current mayor, or a previous mayor, or whatever. You can do all sorts of very, very strange requests uh, in terms of, um, uh, any kind of metadata for any entity out there, and if it has GPS coordinates, well, you can visualize it. And this is an example of a location of castles that are also archaeological sites. It's just some random example that I picked. Uh, if you go to query.wikidata.org, query.wikidata.org, and click on examples, there's a gazillion of them. And some of them get visualized with maps, some visualized with, as a table, uh, actually, Katie here is a, represent, uh, good, uh, a, representation, uh, a representative of Wikidata uh, uh, team. Um, going on. This is something that actually we did not do. This is totally not our thing. This is something Mapbox people did for OSM Editor and uh, published it. There's a link at the bottom if you can see it. Um, this is the first attempt to closely knit together Wikidata, Wikipedia, and OSM. So when you add Wikipedia, it actually automatically auto-inserts Wikidata. I want to highlight this. This is, I feel this is a work in progress. It should be more, even more should be done there because we should not link to English Wikipedia articles. This is a very influx thing. Wikidata is the only thing that's, no, it's not the only thing, but it's, more likely to stay intact and won't change. Wikipedia articles get renamed all the time. I mean, obviously something big like United States would not get renamed, but the moment, 
or it might. Uh, but in, <laughs> I mean, we do have new. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> um, but smaller cities get renamed all the time. There's, uh, different uh, different monuments, whatever. So Wikidata ID is what should be tying OSM and Wikipedia together, uh, and. But yet, Wikidata ID is horrible. I mean, it's just a number. So it should be visualized by tools much better so community can very easily inspect it. Just look at it and don't see the number, but instead see the labels in any language you want to read it in and uh, possibly get all sorts of metadata from Wikidata. Again, do we want to store the same kind of information in two places? We should like figure out what, what should be on OSM side, what should be on the Wikidata side, and how to bring them together so it, they work together much nicer benefit from that. Some of the benefits of this integration, this is just my other to toy project, uh, it's called Graphs, Graph Extension. It allows data visualizations. And here I specifically, even though it's usually used for like charts and um, regular graphs, it also supports mapping, like ma map information. So you can, um, I'll actually demo it in a, in a bit, but the very top one is actually a Wikidata query requesting all the sub-regions, basically admin levels is one, uh, from, um, from a country, any country. You give it a country ID, it, it gets the list of sub-regions for it. Then it uses the OSM service to add the shapes, the geo shapes for each of these sub-regions. Then it gets all sorts of other information from Wikidata, like population and the name in that language, whatever language you want. And possibly the images and the flags of that sub-region. And then it all gets shown in a little graph on Wikipedia page. And all this technology is live and available everywhere in Wikipedia if people want to start inserting it. And it's inter interactive. As you kind of um, hover over different regions, it will pop up and explain what that little region is. And anyone can edit it and change it. Um, Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Cartesarian, and Max will, will, will help me with this. Um, Cartesarian is a little service, a tile service, that uh, we had to build for maps, because um, it's a vector tile service. Uh, I highly encourage uh, you to take a look. It still needs some work in terms of making it independent of WMF-specific uh, configurations and technologies, but um, it's a generic service to serve vector tiles or raster tiles. Uh, it can be very flexibly configured to use any kind of storage medium um, and additional plugins such as GeoShapes, which the previous slide was using. Oops. Yeah, so the, in principle, the, uh, this is... Um, not something new architecturally. This is a typical vector tile server. So we have a Postgres database uh, replica of OSM. We use it to pre-generate all the uh, tiles in vector format at levels 0 to 15. Uh, we store uh, the resulting vector tiles in Cassandra. Uh, alternatively, we have a Postgres uh, backend, and uh, we, we might experiment further with it, but uh, we were already using Cassandra, and it uh, seemed like a good choice with its uh, multi-data center support. Uh, and then there is a Cartatherian that uh, it can just serve you vector tiles from Cassandra, or if you need uh, PNGs or JPEGs, uh, it converts them on the fly. And in front of uh, Cartatherian, there is a HTTP caching layer for which we are using Varnish. Uh, also, when OSM updates are happening, uh, we have a Tile regeneration service, uh, Telerator, that uh, distributes the load uh, across the cluster. 
it can be used to generate tiles, regenerate tiles. You rewrote a pretty sick architecture where it uh, actually re re resembles how you work with various Unix tools. So you basically pipe one thing into another thing and into another thing so the same way. In Cartotherian, there is a system of sources. So actually, internally, all the the uh, tellerator operations are basically copy from the, the, this source into that source. Yeah. And um, now, before we, we do the Q&A, I want to do a very quick demo, if I'm able to move that screen to the other screen. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, excellent. So, as um, Joanne was saying, this is basically a wiki voyage site, and it has different links. You can click on it, and the internet is down. Um, but you understand the concept, right? Um, <laughs> um, this is the graph extension I was mentioning, and as you can, oh great, see, like, yeah. There goes the demo. Um, Imagine beautiful pictures popping up as you move this. <laughs> oh, there was a picture. Oh, there's some flags popped up. Ah, it's working. <laughs> Wonderful internet is back. So uh, the point is that with just this one line with different projections of different configurations, sizes, whatever, you specify which uh, country you want, and it just shows it to you. There's Netherlands for you. And... Uh, uh, there's, it shows population, for example, right there. All this Wikidata data is available. All the images are available in common. So all of this put together can be shown right there in Wikipedia. This is actually a Wikipedia site, one of our projects. So this template can be copied as is to another Wikipedia. On that, we switch to Q&A. If I, yep, there we go. Yes. The castle? No. Well, um, the the query service itself is uh, simply it just gets whatever Wikidata data is there. But if you pump that query through the OSM server, I mean through the Cartesian service, Cartesian service can append geo shapes for the Wikidata IDs. So if the if the element is tagged in OSM database with a Wikidata ID, Cartesian service can just convert that query from Wikidata to a top of JSON with, for the, uh, with the needed elements plus all the properties uh, of the original query. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's, yeah, I'm sorry. I, Google presentations need to be adjusted a little bit, I guess, sorry. Ask me questions, that would be easier probably at this point. <laughs> questions? Yeah. Do you have any special handling for arrays or extensive patches or sort of, I mean, point for polygons, you can specify for graphs and headers and things. Uh, Max, you want to take this one? No? Max was doing most of the data conversion transformations. So. Uh, have you tried the. Uh, actually pulling lines out of it? Well, uh, I mean, oh, are, are you talking about GeoShapes service? Sorry, uh, or? I'm not talking about adding kind of the whole integrated data question regarding the clustering of lines. Oh, like, uh, talking um, about GeoShapes. Oh, sorry, my, my bad. I, I thought you, you meant the data. Um, at this point, it's querying just a table with polygons. Uh, if the other table is available, I mean, it will be fairly easy to change that to extend it to lines or whatever other elements there are. I see, like, it should be very straightforward and simple. So we also have someone in the wiki data who can represent, like, the relationship with the three stations, and then each of them has, like, coordinates, so it's like you can take a, a map that way for, for the network. Mm -hmm. possible. Well, we, we, I would love to actually somehow figure out how to like, get that information and plot it easily, more easily. 
Yes, sir. Yes, uh, so uh, basically how, how uh, this is something I actually forgot to mention, but uh, uh, like how do we drive all the volunteer help towards OSM to, uh, is that the question? Yeah, so given all this amazing volunteer support that Wikipedia gets, we would really love those volunteers to also be able to contribute to OSM. And I think we should get closer ties, uh, either like a joint login, somehow uh, ability to clip, click a button and just kind of notify uh, that there's a problem with a certain map, or go directly into OSM ed ID editor or other editor and contribute. Uh, would love to work on this. This is one of the, our main goals, to improve the maps this way. Yes, and I just want... I just want to add that uh, yeah, this is one of the main goals, and we have uh, a ticket in our um, fabricator to basically like get some ideas on how we could implement that that feature and and how that experience uh, would work. So if you have any ideas on on how we can put like a report a bug or like contribute back to OpenStreetMap, how that would work. If you have any idea, come talk to me and and let's let's try to figure out something. Joven is in charge of user interface, so, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you have plans to add like a time access to the Wikipedia map? Like for example, give me a, how the, give me how the world looks like in the 10th century. So because on Wikipedia there's lots of like historical data and historical view of the world is very important to us. So I'm wondering if we have plans for adding a time, so time access to the map. Thanks. Mm, trying to find a demo for you. Right. So historical, uh, sorry, not prepared to show you a demo, but the, the historical map uh, questions have been coming up quite a lot. Um, there is some rudimentary support in graphs to do um, geoshapes changes through time. We do not yet have have it as a uh, system for like a general map yeah. historical map well, we do have, um, I, I yeah but like like there's like the map where we're system and then there's the map that was like originally developed like for the New York Public Library, but we have like an instance of that like that's integrated or being integrated with Wikimedia Commons so like you can upload like a old, old map and then and then like like warp it and then it can, I think there's some integration with IDE where like it can be digitized and I think they're working with like open historical map or something. So, so to be able, be able to have like historical like, like data, it's like using the OSM technology. So like at, I'm sure at some point like we'll have it integrated with this, but like there's like a bit of work being done on that, so. So yeah, oh, and uh, oh, we we're sorry, we're out of time. Come talk to us. We're here uh, all of the weekend, and uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, Julian. <laughs> <laughs>